everybody. Our next speaker is the creator of Lodash and the web apps and frameworks PM at Microsoft and is here to tell us about the future of ECMAScript modules. Everybody make some noise for JDD. So I'm going to be switching slides and going into the console and stuff so it doesn't make sense to just go full screen. So just pretend like the little preview doesn't exist unless you want spoilers. Um, all right. So today I'm going to talk about ECMAScript modules um, and the path to node support. Um, how many people use Babel? Here. Oh, wow. So like everyone uses Babel. OK, cool. Uh, does, does everyone like using Babel? Hands? All right, cool. I love using Babel. Um, but native support is coming, and there's going to be some key differences. Uh, and so let's begin. OK. So you can uh, follow along uh, in a blog post that I've written uh, on my Twitter account. Uh, go there. It's a pinned tweet. And this will go into a deep dive into uh, the module loader that I'll be talking about. So if you want to follow along there, twitter.com slash jdalton. OK. So ECMAScript modules are here. Uh, they are flagged in several uh, browsers. Uh, they're available uh, in uh, Safari natively. Um, but they are coming to Node. Um, so let's first look at the anatomy of a module. Um, and so in Node land, you have something called CommonJS. And CommonJS is a module format. Node doesn't quite follow CommonJS to a T, but it's close enough. It's the, it's the primary use, uh, user of that format. So let's look at that. So here's CommonJS, and I'll zoom in a bit here. You have uh, a require call for a module. Uh, you can assign it to a variable. If you want to export something, you have a free variable called exports that you can bolt on properties to and assign values to. Uh, and then you have a module.exports. Uh, and that module.exports is the other exports there. there one is a, a reference that's passed in. And then the other one is a one that you can assign directly to. And so if you assign module.exports a function, uh, whenever you require a module, that will be the function that's returned from the require call. So cool. Now let's look uh, a little bit behind the curtain of what CommonJS really is. This is what CommonJS really is. So how many people knew, uh, by a show of hands, that CommonJS is actually code that's wrapped in an iffy? Right? OK, cool. So, and that is how you get things like the exports uh, variable, require, module, file name, and dir name. Um, and so there's opportunity there to tap into that and expand on that. And I'll get into that in just a little bit later. So here's the ECMAScript module format. And I'm going to do a side by side because uh, it's easier that way. <laughs> Here we go. So ESM. You have import keyword, uh, and you can import a binding uh, from the module. Um, whenever you export, you can export bindings as well. Uh, so it's export let, uh, and then the, the, the variable binding for A or B or C, instead of bolting on properties to an exports object. Um, and then you also have things like the uh, export default here, which allows you to, um, similar to require, uh, whenever you would assign it to A in this case, the default value would be assigned to A here. So very similar, but different. Uh, one is syntax, and one is like objects and functions that you can touch. And syntax is something that you have to parse. Um, so cool. Uh, in browsers, you have a very, uh, you have a way of specifying your parse goal. So in a browser, if you want to specify that something is a module, you do this. Type module. That's it. It knows at that point in time to parse it as an ES module instead of parsing it as a traditional script, uh, which means that uh, you'll be get import uh, key, keywords, export. Um, there's various rules about uh, async keywords and other things like that as well. It's also implicitly strict. Um, but all of that is, is toggled on the attribute to the script element. Um, cool. Pretty easy. So, so what does Node-Land do? Well, <laughs> this, this is Node right now, all right? Woo. 
So they, they offered a solution to that. And so they said, hey, we'll just create a new extension called MJS. All future-facing module code, if you want to use import or export, will be uh, MJS. And so how did Node folks respond to this, the community? Uh, this. <laughs> so uh, you have some people that will never use it. You have other people uh, that want to use it for everything, including like in the browser. So there's a wide range of opinions, uh, but the strength of Node has always been in its uh, community of user land packages. And let me s zoom out so you can see that. Of user land packages. And so that's where, that's where I come in. I am creating a new ECMAScript module loader uh, for you to be able to load uh, ES modules using import or export uh, in Node 4 plus without having to wait for Node 10. By the way, uh, modules land in Node 10, which is April 2018, um, and it will be flagged in Node 9 before that. Um, but if you want to jump in all in to ESM and just use import-export, um, that means your usage would have to start significantly later uh, because Node 8 expires on maintenance, uh, I think it's uh, the day, at the January 1st, 2020. A ways away if you want to just go all in with ESM and not have to worry about older versions of Node and CommonJS. Uh, so having a loader allows you to uh, have both. So, so this is a slightly older and more like it angers some people um, just because of like all the X's on one side and all the check marks on another. By default, the loader is 100%, well, strives to be 100% spec compliant and follows Node's vision of ES module support, which means that it only works with .mjs and all of that. But the, the loader is configurable. So I'm going to go into just some of the options here. Um, so whoop, here we go, and I'll zoom in. So the loader supports live bindings. I, I mentioned earlier that uh, CommonJS has, uh, you bolt on properties to the exports object or the module that exports object. Um, and with ESM, uh, it's bindings, it's actual variable bindings. So the module that you require can change the values of its exports and it will be reflected live in your consuming module. That's super cool and that's something that, that was not possible, ooh, what's going on? That was not possible before. Um, the other thing is, let's see, I'm gonna zoom out and go back down. My scrolling is, oh, there we go. A little weird, cool. One of the other things that it supports is uh, loading .js as ESM. So there was, an, there was other proposals at the time. So MJS was one of them. Uh, there was one called Unambiguous um, JavaScript Grammar, which I, I championed to try to get through. Uh, and what that was was if you don't have a hint like a file extension, you could be able, you could determine the parse goal of a JavaScript file by the contents of that JavaScript file. Um, basically, if the JavaScript file has at least an import or an export, you know that it is a module, and so you can treat it as a module. Um, so you can actually opt into that behavior uh, with the module loader. You just say ESM colon JS, uh, and then now it will detect, uh, based on your usage, how the file should be processed. Uh, we also support things that are experimental um, uh, in stage one at the moment, which are source pragmas. So you, everyone's probably used uh, use strict. Um, uh, how many people have used use strict? Great, so yeah, I was right, just about everyone. Uh, so similar to that, you could say use module. Um, and that would be a hint to, to tell the parser, oh, I want to treat this as a module. So instead of relying on an out of band indicator, like an attribute on a script element, or a file extension. You can tell it in the source code how you want to process the file. So we support that as well. You can do that. Uh, you can also tell it that you want all files, regardless of extension, to be treated as, as modules, as ECMAScript modules. Um, so again, then there's no detection, there's no heuristic. It just says, give, you give me JS and I will spit out a module for you. Um, one of the other cool things is loading gzipped modules. Um, so Node has built-in gzip support. Uh, gzip support allows you to, just like on a web page, you can load resources that are compressed. Uh, Node allows you to load resources and inflate resources that are compressed. Um, 
So you can actually apply this to your modules. Uh, and what's great about that is uh, Lodash is currently 4.5 megabytes, uh, and then everyone's node modules folder has about like 36 installs of Lodash. Um, which means that if you're on resource-constrained devices or if you're on Azure uh, 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 functions or AWS lambdas, space is not infinite, right? Um, so what I, what I plan to do there is, for example, I'm going to use Lodash as the example. Lodash has uh, 643 modules inside its package. Um, but you probably use about five or six for your project. So what I'm going to do is gzip every single one of those packages, or every single one of those modules, and then when you request it using the ECMAScript module loader, uh, it will inflate them and then uh, treat them just as they were any other module. Uh, what that does is that reduces uh, the Lodash package from four megabytes to 90 kilobytes, uh, which is crazy cool. Uh, so 90 kilobytes, um, and uh, everything is gzipped. Uh, what I've also done is I've already created a, a, a loader for Webpack, and it's, it's part of Webpack's uh, collection of loaders that allows you to um, integrate uh, gzip support into Webpack as well, so uh, you can continue to bundle as you've been bundling. Um, some of the other things that it supports in that, um, I, I actually removed from the initial release because I thought it was too many features, uh, which is, uh, syntax extensions. Um, so import export syntax. There is there's a lot of import syntax that isn't reflected in an export syntax. So there's there's some missing symmetry there. You can do one thing in import, but you can't do it in export. Um, so I have worked with uh, Ben Newman of Meteor, who's also uh, contributing to the loader and 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 did massive amount of work on the uh, project before that, that our loader is based on, which is called Reify. Um, I've worked with him to champion these uh, uh, syntax extensions uh, to the TC39, uh, and we got, we got one of them fast-tracked for stage three, uh, so I will uh, be presenting at the next, the next month's uh, TC39 uh, to try to get that merged into the language, and th that one is this export star as ns from mod. So you can import star as ns from mod, but you can't export that. Uh, so now you'll be able to do that, rock on. Uh, our loader will eventually support that. I've got it under a flag and I've hidden it away. Um, something that you probably do if you use Babel is you do this pattern right here, which is import named uh, uh, exports. Um, that is not supported uh, in Node's vision of ESN. So if you use .mjs and you want import and export, and you try to load a common JS file, uh, which is like the path module, the FS module, um, whatever, Lodash earlier, um, and you want to try to, to re, uh, require individual methods from them, like join or read, write, all of that stuff, it won't work. Uh, you have to do the default import. Um, so I like to use named exports like this, and it's super handy. Uh, we will allow you to use that if you opt into it by um, allowing, there's a, a CJS compatibility uh, option. And all of these things are super easy to configure. It's basically just CJS true, um, and then you'll be able to, to use the syntax you're familiar with. Um, something else, and I'll get to it right here, right here, is that um, ESM will remove some environment variables that you probably find pretty useful. Um, things like dir name, file name, require are all gone. You can't use them. If you want to use them, like dir name, you create a common JS module, that module that exports dir name, then you import that module into your ESM module, uh, which is a little roundabout. Um, eventually, they'll solve that by, by uh, standardizing import.meta which is an, another proposal to associate metadata with a module, but they're not there yet. Um, so because I want the loader to meet the uh, ecosystem where it's at, you can opt into uh, getting these, these, these environment variables that you're used to. So then the other one is dealing with require and common JS. Um, there is no require in ESM, um, and you can't require a uh, ESM an ES module from within CommonJS using require. So 
you have to use import. There's going to be a new import pseudo function. It's not a real function. It's syntax that looks like a function. So it's import bracket name of module. Um, and that's going to be asynchronous, so it's promise-based. Um, but you can't use require, and so there's a way for you to opt into that as well. So that's quite a lot of features. Um, I try to bucketize them into things like common JS compat, uh, uh, unambiguous grammar, so like if you want to load JavaScript files, or in this case, syntax extensions. Um, again, they're all off by default, because we, uh, we, defaults are important, and you want to be able, you want to go with whatever the ecosystem has laid out. So if Node plans for MJS and has all these rules in place for that, then the default should be that, because that means it's going to work with Webpack, it's going to work with Babel, it's going to work with all the other loaders that you have uh, without stepping on toes. And that's what I want this to be. I want this to look very much like a built-in, which is why I've named it the way I have, and I'll, I'll go into that. So the idea was without an ESM loader, you're this guy. Uh, with an ESM loader, you're, you're, you've got a parachute, basically. And this uh, saves your compatibility. Um, you can start using it immediately instead of having to wait till 2020. You don't have to worry about hybrid packages like um, currently the, one of the solutions is, well, just ship your ES code and your common JS transpile code and then toggle based on entry point. But that means like doubling the size of your package. So for Lodash, for an example, uh, Lodash was four megabytes, 4.5 megabytes. Uh, if I doubled that, that would be horrible, right? I don't want to do that. And I don't think other people uh, should have to do that either. Um, I like the, the, the option of just being able to ship one code that runs everywhere the same. You don't have to worry about, well, older environments get this and this code path, and newer environments get that and that code path, and oh, there's some inconsistency here. It's one code base. All, versions of, uh, all uh, supported versions of Node, um, and you get ECMAScript modules. So cool, so let's look at some demos. All right. By the way, if you want to try this out, uh, it's like it was released yesterday. Uh, so in my mind, I'm thinking about all the bugs that have just been filed on it. It's 0 0.2 on the version number, so give it a week or two to shake out. Like, so I've been working on it for like five months. It's based on a project that's been uh, used in production at Meteor for the last uh, 13 months. Um, it's got tens of uh, thousands of apps in Meteor that, that use this same technique. So it's, it's pretty solid technique. But as with anything, when you first release something, all the bugs just come at you. Um, so I, and I love it. Like, it makes the, the, the project uh, more stable, and it's going to be a good thing. But it's like the first week. So, but you can try it out. And so to do that, you go, so npm install the standard ESM loader. Uh, I nab the standard namespace, so I can potentially expand that to become standard lib. Maybe Lodash will become a standard lib package. Um, or maybe I want to just give gzip support, so standard gzip support, you'll get that. So if you npmi this, you'll get that. I recommend going to the blog post uh, there as well, because I cover a ton of things. Um, okay, demo time. <laughs> so you can see I was debugging a problem there. You see nothing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I will zoom in. Or not. I will zoom in. Okay. So, this is a really fancy demo. Uh, node, let's look at the version number. So 8.3. Node 8.3 does not support modules, right? Everyone, no, it does not. Haha. -ha. <laughs> but let's look at this impressive demo. Okay, that impressive demo. I don't know if you can see that. Let me zoom in. This is what the demo did. It did, it did hello world. So that's, that's a pretty big deal. Um, let's look at why that is a big deal. Okay, so that index file required the loader and then exported something here with a dot default. Now let me, let me zoom in more to that again. This is what it was. 
that required the loader and then exported the main to default. So what's main and what's all of that stuff? Let's see. Don't yell at me when I try to find the folder name. Cool. All right, so this is what main is. Main imports path uh, and then logs jo uh, join hello world. Now, you notice that it's doing it in the, the Babel way, the way that most people are used to, which is not actually allowed in ESM. But I've configured it to where you can by just toggling it in the package.json. So this is what this, this code is actually running at, uh, in real time uh, being processed on the fly. Uh, let's look at another demo. Zooming back in. Uh, let's go another awesome demo. Here we go. So that right there, 02, super cool, super cool demo. What it's doing, what it's doing though is really neat. Um, so we have a module here, and this module is importing value, reset, and add bindings from a module called Live B. Uh, and what it's doing then is it's calling reset. And what reset does is sets value back to zero. So value is something like undefined, sets it to zero. So that's of that log, console log zero, is it logging there. Now what's neat is I called add to. And what add to does is add two to value, this value right here. Normally in common JS, that would not work. You would not be able to call add from another module and it m manipulate a value that's in your current module that's a variable, a binding. Uh, in this case, that's exactly what it did. It, you could see by the demo that it spit out two, which means that live binding actually worked. Um, so what we do, just getting into a little bit of the implementation detail. Uh, I showed you before that CommonJS was actually an iffy that wraps your code. Uh, turns out anyone can hook into that. Um, and based on Node's planned behavior for ESM, they're going to start to lock that down. But they're not going to lock that down for CommonJS. Um, and so that's where the ESM loader lives, is in CommonJS land, because I can, basically the first person in can control the environment. And so the ESM loader is the first thing in. What it actually does, though, is it does a quick transpile. So everyone's familiar with Babel. Sometimes Babel can take quite a while uh, when it's processing your code. Um, with Node at 99% ES2015 uh, 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 plus compatibility, really what it's missing is the import-export. Uh, so that's all I worry about, is just import-export live binding behaviors and the Node uh, the node uh, behaviors around that, which allows me to create a very, very fast parse. Um, things come down to microseconds when, it, when, when I'm parsing and, and, and doing code like this. That's why, like, when you noticed in the REPL, it looked instant, right? Because it's, it's super fast. And if you're in the REPL, it's cached. And so you've got that uh, on the server side, uh, and in production, it's cached as well. So the very first time you require something, it goes, oh, I need to process this file. It does a quick parse, uh, a quick uh, inline transformation of the code, and then caches that code. So subsequent loads of the unmodified file have no processing. And it's actually within fractions of a millisecond of native. So it's super, super close to native performance, uh, which is great. So there's, there's this thing that takes up 40 kilobytes-ish, has zero dependencies, works in Node 4 plus, is on par with native performance, and gives you import-export in all of those versions. Uh, so that's the ESM loader there. Um, super excited about that. Uh, I want to show you real quick, too, the package. All right. So let's look at that package. This is, this is the actual loader. Let me zoom out. That's the loader itself. You can see it's hidden away. It's got no other code. I'm loading a gzipped file. Again, I want the, the package to be something that you can just reach for. 
Uh, so in this case, I'm taking 400 kilobytes, 200 kilobytes of JavaScript, gzipping it up, and then loading it uh, through the index file. Um, and that is the loader itself, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, on modern machines, uh, there's almost no cost to this. Uh, I haven't done a ton of testing, and I know someone's gonna like show me a Raspberry Pi where like j j decompressing a gzip file is gonna be expensive, but for now, I I'm going with it. Um, I think that uh, it's, a, it's a pretty cool technique. It also encourages you not to touch this thing. Like, the, the, the loader, I made sure, I, I actually freeze the exported object of the loader, so you can't touch it. Um, I don't, the, the loader gets into hooks on the module system, and I want that to be something that is stable. And so other packages, like you can get into React and use some of its internal packages and, and modules. I don't want that to happen, so I've locked all of that stuff down. Um, what's neat is because I control the loader, I'm gonna go back here real quick. I'm gonna go over here. And go back to this bit here. Cool. So, because I control the loader, you, these values right here can actually be excluded from your running code. So when you're running ESM uh, or ES module code in Node, you don't have access to module and uh, file name and that because I, all I have is just remove them from the wrapped iffy that is executing your code. Uh, something else, uh, modules, uh, ES modules are, uh, have a this binding, so the default this of undefined, um, which is different than CommonJS. CommonJS, the this binding, a little known fact, is the exports object. So you can say this.a equals whatever instead of saying exports.a equals whatever. Um, so there's a way around that as well. You can basically, I, I inject a function uh, at the top of the iffy here that is called dot run and then executes the code inside of that uh, with a this binding of undefined. Um, something else that I do is uh, common JS modules have that module and that export reference. It's built in to the system. You can observe it by going require.cache and looking at all of the module objects there. Um, so how do you hide that from a ES module? Um, it gets pretty, pretty tricky. Uh, what you do is you have a reference to the exports object, you have a reference to module.exports. Um, because I'm the first script in, I can grab a reference to that first exports object, take it, move it over here, uh, replace the module.exports object with a brand new empty object. So I've got something over here that's in your environment that you don't have access to, uh, that I can then anchor on API points to, to handle the transformation, to handle the behavior of like running the module, importing the module, because everything's transpiled back to like pseudo library code. Uh, and then, I assign that exports object to a new variable, and that variable changes every time you save the file, so you can't access that variable name. If you try to get it and you save the file, the variable name changes to something else. Uh, something else I've done is that variable name has a zero width uh, joiner in it. So the variable name looks like it's three characters long, but it's actually considerably more. Um, and I do that again to make it really, really a pain to try to grab these things. Uh, it should be, should be overwhelming uh, obstacles for you to try to, to tamper with the module system. And I did that again to make this feel native. I want this thing to, to feel native. You shouldn't see the implementation. Uh, when something errors, it actually, it actually cleans up the error uh, stack for you too. So you don't see like Acorn's parse tree uh, in there or some of the internals of the, the 20 or so modules that actually power ESM. Um, so all of that's abstracted away. So for more information on this, uh, you can check out the blog post, which again was on the Twitter account. Um, and then it covers all kinds of uh, interesting information there. Uh, or you can come and talk to me uh, after the talk. Uh, that's it. Cool.